The following is a presentation of Project Independence and WCWP. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the Town of North Hempstead. We provide programs and services designed to assist and support the older town residents who wish to remain in their homes as they age. If we don't currently provide a service, we will try and connect you to that service. Call 311 or 869-6311 to get more information or receive services. Welcome to Project Independence and you. Welcome back to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan, and my co-host is Otto Lose. And what a segment we had. Honestly, I compliment Christina week after week because we don't just pick a topic. She winds up getting one of the most wonderful people to present that topic. And that's so important. You know, the, the interaction that Otto and I have with everybody who's been coming on the show is just tremendous. I don't, you agree? I definitely agree. And that topic, as I said, was one that um, I, I have to tell you, I was not an expert on. I'm still not, but I have a lot more of an understanding about the topic and, uh, and an understanding of what people go through who have it um, and what can be done to help them make it less difficult than it is. It's a difficult problem. There's no question. And you can't poo-poo that. It's, that's the facts. But what can you do to help make that a little bit better, uh, I think, is the key ingredient. No, I you're think. you know, you're certainly right. It's a topic that I know comes up a lot with our project independent social workers and nurses. Um, you know, there's a lot of that. And, and there's, you know, definitely a, a huge fear around it. But I think Dr. Deep really you know, gave us tons of great information. And I think it was jam packed the segment with a lot of golden nuggets, you know, whether it's things to prevent it, or if you do have it, you know, how to kind of, you know, we were all sitting there, you know, I think everybody that's listening and watching wrote down orange peppers, you know, to, to, to really, um, and kale, you know, even though we know that uh, our director over there, Dan is not, you know, too fond of kale. I'll make sure to note that on any, um, you know, future celebrations. We have. But um, it really, it was a great segment. I think you guys did a wonderful job and, and I have to give a lot of credit to Dr. Deep. We've had him on the show. I think he was on the show a couple of years back and, and he's certainly always a wonderful um, guest. And I'm, I'm always impressed, you know, when a doctor is able to talk about these, you know, that's that's that are, that are you know, open, good, open dialogue. Uh, also discussing the fact that it costs a lot of money to treat. You know, guys, I'm going to interrupt because we have Laura here. Yes. Right. And I just want to say hello to our county executive, Laura Curran. How are you, dear? Hello, John Ryan. It's great to see you. I'm fine. Thanks. How are you doing? Very good. Good. Keeping busy. Trying to anyway. And yeah. I know you are. I know you are. Great state of the county. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank You're doing you. great. You know. Can I ask Laura a quick question that has nothing to do with anything? Uh, my sure. wife asked me to ask, does your husband have a brother named Thomas? No, he's got two sisters and no brothers. OK, then it's not the same one because yeah. she worked for the legal counsel at St. John's. And there was oh. a, a, a one of the students was a John Curran uh, who was there. And but he had a brother, Thomas, and they that's both, funny because my husband went to St. John's. Yeah, that's why she asked me to ask, because she worked yeah. for, she worked for the legal counsel. My wife did. And uh, these two particular uh, boys, they were boys back then, uh, were, were she really liked them. And they were one was uh, quite uh, cut up and the other one was quite serious. So oh, that's so funny. No, no, that's a different, different current clan. Well, John is being cut up, Laura. John, John, depending on the day, he could be either. <laughs> I love it. Well, anyhow, that had nothing to do with COVID. So I like it. It's important, though. An equally important topic there, Otto. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's going on in the town, the county? Excuse me. Well, we're doing really well with our immunization. We're, we have 30, 30, now 33 percent of our population has had at least one dose. So we're still leading the state in terms of our percentage. So that's good news. And I had my first dose. Dr. Larry administered it yesterday at the college, at our distribution site at the college. So um, I was a little was wondering if I had a, would have a reaction today, but I feel fit as a fiddle. 
So I'm really excited. You know, I, I fit in two categories now. I'm, I'm a front-facing government worker, number one, that was last week. And then this week, folks, hate to admit this, hate to admit this, but folks over 50 are now eligible. So I'm, I'm eligible tw- times, two times over now. So I figured this is the good time to get it. Good for you. And I know I, I wasn't here last week, uh, but I did listen after the fact that you actually were in quarantine twice. I was. Now, I have never tested positive. I'm knocking on wood as I say that, thank goodness. But I've had to quarantine twice because twice I was the close contact of a positive. So having to, um, you know, work from home like everyone else with the Zoom and the phone calls. And sometimes I'd meet reporters, uh, you know, always over Zoom. Right. Uh, But it kind of gave me an insight into what so many of our residents have had to live through. I mean, it's not easy being home for long periods of time. And, uh, you know, I think the way that our residents have adjusted to this is really, really quite remarkable. But the most important, uh, you can come next item. The most important thing that I want to stress is Laura practices what she preaches. So she wasn't out there telling everybody to uh, quarantine and stay safe and do this and do that. She's doing her job as a trooper. She's out there doing the best she can, any place she can with a mask and everything else. And then when she was twice exposed, did what she wants people to do. She went into quarantine and was saving everybody else. And I thank you so much from everybody. That was wonderful. And I know it's hard for you because you're so damn busy. Well, thank you for that, John. Um, I did get a chance to clean out the closets. I got a lot of stuff ready for the thrift shop. So <laughs> the dogs got more walks than they usually get. So it wasn't all bad. Uh, there was an announcement today or this morning, last night, whatever, that nursing home visits are now allowed do you have any information on, on an overview of what the parameters are for that? Yeah, this is such great news, Otto. This, uh, so many, I can't tell you how many people I spoke to who were just so sad that they couldn't visit their parents, their grandparents in nursing homes, and they missed them and they were alone. Uh, so this is good news. The state is now allowing this, and all of our nursing homes are now getting ready to facilitate these visits, to allow these visits, and putting in the guidelines. Obviously, we want to keep our You know, we know that seniors, especially frail seniors, are the most vulnerable to COVID-19. So we've got to protect them. But I have to say, with our infection rate low, with with most people in nursing homes now vaccinated, there was really no excuse to to not allow visits anymore. Uh, People need for their mental health to be with their loved ones, to connect with their loved ones. There's so many. and, And just for overall, like physical health as well, it has benefits to you know, the endorphin rush of seeing people that you love and giving them a hug, that cannot be underestimated. So I'm very happy about this. And I know that the nursing homes are working hard to, to make sure that they can do this safely. So the ground rules, though, it's, it can be inside. It doesn't have to be outside. And uh, the, Yeah, there has the, to be a certain percentage in the community uh, that the, the infection rate can't be high and that 70% of the people inside the nursing home have to be vaccinated. Okay. Because I've gone, like a lot of people, uh, where we were able to visit my sister-in-law for my first wife is in a nursing home. Nobody's mm. been able to go there since last March. And uh, we visited through a window uh, many times. You know, we stand outside in the snow and she was inside, but mm. really had no idea what was going on. Uh, and, yeah, and it's uh, not the same, is it, through the window? It's Yeah, and, and she has a little hearing problem, so uh, FaceTime or whatever else you might use uh, didn't work too good. Uh, so it's difficult. But anyhow, it's good news for a lot of people, as you pointed out. Yeah, and soon enough, you'll be able to visit in person. Yes. It's, yeah, it's huge news. And, and, and we've talked about this on the show, Laura. You know, from my business, I'm a financial advisor. You don't know, unfortunately, my business has picked up during COVID. Because uh. a lot of people refer widows to me because I'm nice with ladies. And I mean, <laughs> how many of these women didn't see their husband for two, three, and four weeks and then got a phone call? He's dead. Brought him to the emergency room. Ambulance picked him up or something. They never saw him again. They didn't wind up knowing how to FaceTime any of this stuff. And then they got the call. Your husband yeah. passed away. It makes me sick. Not that you're going to do anything. But to hold somebody's hand and say, I love you, versus just sitting in a room by yourself and the poor woman, women, women, being in good health, wanting to do something for their husband. Mm-hmm. And just waiting for the phone call to come. It was heartbreaking. 
so sad. I know it's, the loss is hard enough, but then when you can't be there with them to comfort them and see them through, it's, it's really hard. You know, I got to say our, our healthcare workers really took the place of so many family members. They were there holding the hand. You know, that's something that they're going to carry with them for the rest of their lives too. Absolutely. I agree with you. We've had hospice people on here and that mm-hmm. they became surrogate family, mm-hmm. which is such a wonderful gift to be given when you think about it, to help yep. some die and, and give them a little bit of peace while they were doing it, not even being a family member, just being yeah. a carer. Yeah. Know. But, and vaccinations, other than, our, you know, we don't have new spots popping up yet, right? No. We, on Tuesday, oh, we're working with a, a vendor called Mobile Health oh, okay. uh, to do vaccinations. So we're, we're using our vaccines so that they can distribute, they can administer them at the Coliseum. So that opened up, we did a soft launch on Tuesday and we can do, if need be, up to a thousand a day there. Uh, so I think we're doing about 350, 400 a day as of now. Um, and I have to thank the operators of the Coliseum and the Islanders because you know, there are games there now with fans. So we're working with them. There's a lot of moving parts, but it's done very safely. They're very separate, doing it down in the exhibition hall. So that's going well. So the county is currently running four. You know, we are we ourselves are running three, but we're using our doses for this fourth site. So uh, county doses that we get from the federal government, we're getting them, we're getting them, you know, turning them around and getting them into arms. And then we're seeing more, you know, you're hearing about this. There's more coming from the federal government, more to the state, more down to us through hospitals, through pharmacies. So while there was a real frustration and anxiety to get the vaccinations at the beginning, uh, we're finding that that's easing up a little bit. And we announced, I think it was last week, a senior hotline. A lot of our seniors have a hard time, you know, sitting there, maybe they don't have a computer or they're not as savvy with it. They don't want to sit there refreshing the browser. So we have a dedicated hotline. I can give you the number. It's 516-227-9590. And it will direct you to one of our folks in in our Department of Social Services to help you make an appointment. Uh, if you're a senior or if you're the loved one of a senior, because we know that it's been particularly difficult. And and we've been hearing a lot about homebound and the difficulty for getting the folks who are homebound to get vaccinated. So we had a big call last week with our hospitals. We wanted to see how they were doing it. And we're hoping to partner with some of, one or some of them, whether they have a visiting nurse service or how, how are they getting to their homebound folks? Um, I think it makes sense. You know, so we're hoping to give some of our vaccine that we're getting to them so that they can do it. Now, I think it makes a lot of sense to get more Johnson and Johnson before we do that. We've gotten one shipment of Johnson and Johnson to the county, to our county run sites. Uh, That was, I guess, maybe two weeks ago. It was a thousand doses, but the rest we've gotten Moderna. So the homebound, I think it makes a lot of sense for the Johnson and Johnson because it's one shot. You don't have to come back. Uh, So that's something that we're very focused on. Get a lot of questions about that. And I'm hoping I'm hoping that we do get more Johnson and Johnson so we can turn those around. How does that work as far as the allocations of of uh, shots goes? Like it starts at the federal level, it filters down to the state level and then it goes to the county level. Who do you have to get your allocations from? Like who 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 tells you you, or county can have whatever? You explain that exactly right, Otto. It's the federal government, and then they allocate it to the state, and there's more coming, and there's more coming this week. And then the state then gives it to the locality, so the local departments of health around the county. They also give it to hospitals, and it's sometimes it's the federal government, sometimes it's the state government that gives it directly to the pharmacies that are coming online. So that's that's sort of the chain of how it happens. Now, while we are getting more doses down here, we may not necessarily be getting more doses to our Department of Health sites because there are now we have more uh, state run facilities here on Long Island. So we've had Stony Brook and Jones Beach pretty much from the beginning, but now we have SUNY Old Westbury that's come online, that's state run. And out in Suffolk, we've got a couple out there as well. So there's more coming, not necessarily more to the County Department of Health, but more overall. And on our website, we have links to all of the places where you can get a vaccine in Nassau County. So it's, we want to make it as much of a one-stop shop as possible. So, you know, and, as, and, and like always, when the appointments become available, we put them up there. Does but we are finding there's a slight slowing down 
of the volume of people looking to make appointments because we're slowly getting to the point where supply is meeting demand. We're definitely not there yet, but we're getting there. We're getting closer. And then we, um, we're, the biggest challenge after that will be talking to people who are really skeptical about the vaccine, who don't trust it. So we're, we're doing all kinds of Facebook lives and town halls with uh, doctors from every community to, to just dis- dispel the facts, uh, excuse me, to dispel the misinformation, to give people the facts so that they can make an informed decision. Now, I'm not the kind of person who's going to say, oh, if you don't get a vaccine, you're stupid and you're brainwashed. And what are you doing? Absolutely not. Give people the information and then trust them to make the right decision for themselves. When you mentioned the, the one number, like if let's say you uh, Walgreens now gives shots and CVS, uh, do people have to deal with them directly to try to get an appointment or does that filter through one main number? My point being, should I, as one who needs a vaccine, be also trying to get to Walgreens, trying to get to CVS or is that all under one umbrella? Oh, that's such a good question. So I believe that the pharmacies have their own ways to make appointments, whether it's a phone number or a website. Um, but if that gets too confusing and you don't know who to call, you can just go to our website, nassaucountyny.gov slash vaccine, and we have it all there. It's just all listed there. If you don't feel like making a call to CVS, then making a call to Walgreens, you know, we just try to keep it in one place. Perfect. Laura, I, I want to thank you for coming on like this. And we hope to have you every week with these updates because you, I know we're driving you crazy as everybody <laughs> in, the, in, the, and in the county is, but we love you. You're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And all we can do is thank you. Okay, so have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> uh, right, well, I love you. Floor. I love you too. And if you, uh, you be careful because if you invite me, I will come. <laughs> I'm gonna be here. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, Bye-bye. guys. Now Take we're going care. to take a great weekend. Bye bye. Talk radio. Take care, Laura. We've just been listening to uh, County Executive Laura Carlin. We're taking a break. You're listening to 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. So I get this call from my grandma, and she's like, What's a podcast, and how much does it cost? So I tell her, podcasts are like radio shows, but you can download them on any device and listen to them anywhere at any time, and they're free. And then she says, I see, but where can you find good ones? And I'm like, go to wcwp.org slash podcast and check out the lineup of original shows or download any podcast app on your phone or tablet and search for LIU Studios. And she's all like, Oh, that sounds easy. And then she asked me what an app is. LIU Studios Podcasts, available on any podcast app. You know, those little button things on your phone screen. Just ask your grandkids. Welcome back to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan. My co-host today is Otto Lose. Another informative session with Laura. Uh, You know what it is? And, and I mean this very sincerely. Uh, we are so blessed with Laura Curran. Uh, we are so blessed with Madeline Singus, with Judy Bosworth, with Anna Kaplan, with Gina. You know, the, and it's women, but there's plenty of men, Wayne Wink, et cetera. But the women that we have uh, in the county and in the town and in the state right now. Are just, and in your home. And what? That's right, in your and home. And in your home. And in your home. But they're just <laughs> such wonderful examples of caring. And it really is. I mean, and for Laura to take her time out, you know, uh, to come on just to inform people, just to make you feel comfortable that they're on top of it. They're doing their best to get as many vaccines out here as quickly as possible. And we will look back and eventually we'll look back and it'll all be over and it'll be, do you remember this? And do you remember that? And and yeah, there's going to be some things. I don't know what they are yet that are going to, end when the COVID ends. I mean, relationships even that started, but you're not seeing the person. It's gonna be over, unfortunately. It's life, it's constantly changing, but it'll be also nice to get back to other relationships. You know, my, my 10 year old, he's dying to come back to the house. When am I gonna come in again? It's like, oh. You know, one, okay, so. one, one of the things that I've looked into because that's how my brain works, I guess, from my business years, is uh, the process to get these vaccines to where they finally are. You know, it starts from the research, the development, the manufacturing, you know, uh, 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 they have to authorize that it's good and the whole bit that goes along with it. It's a, it, it. I don't think people have any idea that this is a tremendous process, you know, to, to do this. Uh, it's not like you just 
say, okay, let's ship them out to Walgreens. You know, it doesn't work like that. And I think hopefully if anything comes out of this whole thing is that we have developed a process that if we run into other things down the road, which we might, um, that this process will, will be basically in place, if you will, to be able to handle it uh, quicker, uh, more efficiently. I'm sure lots have been learned during this process, uh, what not to do and what to do. Um, so, I, you know, out of all these adversities, you learn stuff. That's the bottom that's line. That's right, Otto. That's looking at the glass half full. I like it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the federal government has an obligation, in my mind, to always be ready for these kind of situations because they can happen anytime. But the town of North Hempstead doesn't. And Christina can talk about this. I mean, I don't know how many pop-ups we had in the North Hempstead, but all of a sudden, the, the, the people in community services and DOSA all of a sudden got a phone call that on three days from today, we have 500 doses we're giving out. Yeah. One, and and you guys did great. But tell how, how that went about. Yeah. So we, um, you know, it's funny because, you know, while I'm doing this, we have because the first dose of vaccines that we did were in February. So now their second dose is coming up this weekend. So there's all these files, you know, everyone thought it would be better to follow up because a lot of people, you know, they get confused with what time they were supposed to come or whatnot. So we're doing a whole kind of follow-up call thing, but we had, um, there was two, there was, I believe five pods we did so far. It was four or five. I can't even, but we provided, 1,694 um, shots. So that is, uh, and that was a mix of Moderna and we did some Johnson & Johnson. We partnered with uh, Catholic Health Services and with uh, Northwell to do that. So um, it was, uh, it's really great to, you know, as we always say, you know, we're all in this together and it's nice that, you know, every, whatever kind of, you know, local government, everyone's kind of trying to pull together with the state, you know, with the county and, you know, whatnot. So it's, um, it's great that we were able to, to certainly help out. And the problem is we did it so well. It's like, you know, they just want to keep doing these pop-up vaccines over at North Hempstead. So it's, uh, but I was really happy that um, the county executive had mentioned um, the homebound because that's something that a list that I've been keeping, um, you know, which I, cause you know, listen, everyone knows me by now and they know I like to keep a centralized kind of situation. So if the time comes, you know, we're prepared with that list and, you know, we can go on our way. So I've been asking since this whole started, you know, we have, I have a couple of different going, but one of them is this homebound list because there are a lot of seniors who um, are either homebound or they're a caregiver for someone that's homebound. So they can't really get out of the house. Uh, and there's a, the number is certainly growing, you know, and, and we've been at, at Project Independence trying to kind of keep our eye on that um, because it's certainly something that, you know, we're getting calls about. And so it was good to hear that, you know, over the county, they're trying to figure out a way to do this. I know that I just saw an article in the Times, I think it was, or Newsday, and it was, you know, Northwell was doing those Johnson and Johnson um, shots to some homebound seniors who were in their um, kind of doctor at home concierge kind of program. They were able to administer those to um, to the seniors. So hopefully we'll get to that, you know, because that's definitely, I think, something that we need to figure out, because those are the people that unfortunately don't have the tools to navigate getting to, you know, one of these other facilities. So I'm hoping that we'll get to there soon. You know, I read something, uh, Citibank, I believe it is, has a self-COVID test that they distributed to 5,000 employees mm. where you get a kit and mm -hmm. you basically swab yourself and then there's some solution you dip it in. Yes. And it tells you if you had COVID or not. Yeah. Uh, thinking about people who are homebound mm -hmm. um, and uh, other people, frankly, uh, yeah, you know, because, you know, it's, it's, it's I've, you know, I've actually heard about that for a very long time now, um, because, but it's on these podcasts and radio shows I listen to. So it's mostly very wealthy people that have access to these kits. So it would be, you know, and it was, it was working for them because they were going to film or, or whatnot. They were able to kind of do these at home self, you know, tests. So it would be interesting to see, uh, certainly if it could get, um, you know, well, they actually distributed yeah. it to 5,000 employees. So uh, I guess the company pays for that. Yeah. Um, just to make sure that they weren't 
spreading it around to other people. Um, it's a good idea. Yeah, of course. Listen, I mean, all these things, I think, you know, as we were saying, this is certainly a thing that we, a time we've, you know, listen, we're about, you know, over a year in, you know, this situation. So I think it's, you know, there are things that we realized, you know, some things that didn't work, you know, but, you know, this was something that just kind of came out and no one knew what the heck was going on. So businesses had to adjust, you know, governments had to kind of adjust. And, and I think that, you know, hopefully these things can get in place that, you know, God forbid, I really, you know, I'm saying knock it on. If I had wood all around me, I'll knock on the table. We don't have to kind of, we can get a little breather um, in, the, in the next few years from this whole situation. Cause I, I feel like the after effects are certainly, you know, uh, something to, to worry about with this situation. So, but it is getting better. You know, it's, we have to, we're going on the other side of the curve and it's just nice to see, you know, and I say this every week, you know, and you know, the following week I get, you know, the notifications on my phone that, you know, a certain number or a place is being open or a percentage is being raised, you know, so it's, it's good to, um, to see things kind of regaining, you know, some kind of normalcy and, and the weather's getting better. So, you know, you're, you're more able to do things outside and whatnot. So it's all these uh, good things. So we have to hold on to those things. I'm wearing my hope bobby pin today, you know, in honor of, of, of where we're at. So it's, um, it's certainly something that I think is good. And it's just nice to have, I, I just have to give another thank you to the County Executive Laura Karn because, you know, this is her second week and, and we hope, and as we said that each week, if her schedule allows, she can come on, give us a quick update. Because the good thing is, is that each week there is something to give an update about, you know, which shows you that things are moving and, and there's progress being made and new updates, you know, with, with initiatives that are going on. So thank you to her um, for, for doing that. Cause it's a, it's just a great show. Today's just so filled with great information, you know, all of our listeners really can, we really must be getting a quite a brain fuel today. So it's really good. You know what it is, and 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 especially going back to Laura. Um, but then I always give a, a shout out to you, Christina. You know, if you put people together who care, it works. That's the end of it. If you put people together who care, it's going to be fine. And, and I know you tell that to every guest that's coming on. Just chill. It'll be fine. I know because I had to laugh. You know, when I was, you know, I was, you know, catching up with Doctor Deep and you know talking about what he was going to discuss. You know, yesterday we we're doing. He's like, I don't know, an hour. See, I was like, I was like, I was like, trust me it's really not going to be that long. I was like, I was like, everyone, it's like, it's like the running joke, you know, it's like, like, oh my God, even like, you know, some guests were like, oh, 30 minutes, that seems like so long. I was like, I'm telling you, before you know it, it's like gone. Um, and that just shows you how great of speakers they are and the topic, you know, it, it's certainly, um, it's, it's just, it's nice to have. All I know, I know, I have to interrupt. Hear what you said? It's yes. how great the speakers are and the topic. Nothing about and you. These, Nothing these, about you and me, Otto. <laughs> and we could pull the plug in time we want. We didn't get anything. <laughs> it's really the hard-headed questions you two ask, you know, that is really just the cherry on top, I must say. <laughs> you know what? We're going to take a break. I'm disgusted. We're going to take a break. We're listening to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS app store on Apple devices or the Google Play store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. Welcome back to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan, and my co-host is Otto Los. And uh, we've had a great show going on so far today, uh, starting with uh, Dr. Deep Parak, um, who really did a wonderful job making people, in my mind, feel comfortable um, with their situation. That's what you got, you know. In life, there's things you can control and there's things out of your control. But the things that are out of your control, if we're fortunate enough to have people help us, that's all you can ask for. And someone like Doctor was there, I mean, for these people that have suffered and are suffering with macular degeneration, you know, but any disease, you know, no one disease is worse or better than the other. Bottom line, it's just support. If there's somebody to support you, that's all we're looking for. And as far as I'm concerned, 
This program does that. Christina brings on the best guests. Um, and we do our best, Otto and myself, to bring forth as much information and as most comfortable a style. Um, and you do that. You do that very well, all jokes aside. You guys really, you know, you make the guests comfortable. And that's why I think it comes across as understandable. You know, it's in when I was actually talking to Dr. Deep yesterday, he's like, oh, you know, sometimes I do a PowerPoint presentation. I was like, well, this isn't really like the place, you know, for that. I said, it's really going to be conversational. And, and to me, I find that that's the best way to fully understand these things. You know, we were all sitting there saying, you know, macular generation, you know, some of us knew more about it than others, but it's, it's a complex kind of topic, you know, so being in this kind of round table discussion, you know, virtually is, um, is certainly something that I think helps the, um, you know, the listener understand. I don't, I don't, she's trying to be nice to us now in case you didn't I am, know. I have to butter you up, you know, I can't have I you. I have one for you, all right? <laughs> I, always about, I always talk about Alexa, all right? I have Alexa in my office now. And uh, don't fall. I, I know, could show all, yeah. you what Alexa looks like, all right? And I could say, we could demonstrate, all right? I say, Alexa, what is the temperature outside right now? Come on, Alexa. Don't Alexa, right there, Alexa's you. camera shy. <laughs> Alexa, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alexa's, you know, taking a moment. No, what so. is, I don't have the volume on uh, loud enough. There Alexa, Alexa, louder. <laughs> Alexa, louder yet. Alexa, what is the temperature outside? Right now, it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Happy Friday. Oh, and she wished you a happy Friday. You know what, yes. power to Alexa. I like her already. <laughs> but my point is that this is the type of thing people, you can expand on that and get them to read Newsday to you, read books to you, play music, do whatever, just by doing what I did. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I keep talking about it, and I figured maybe I better show I like it. it. Otto came right. for with props today. I like it. That's, that's how you're all Otto. I don't have it at home, Lexus, and uh, I have it in my office, and I've never turned it on. Actually, it just started to talk. I have no idea. Maybe she was trying to hook up with the other one. Well, that's why, because you said her name. So she, uh, you know, it's, it's, they're, it's really, it's sensitive, because I was watching Jimmy Fallon one day, and he was playing a game with Alexa, and my Alexa in the kitchen heard him talking about Alexa in the living room, and it was just like Three this times. surround sound. <laughs> okay, John. <laughs> 10 Give years, it. 10 year olds know how to do it. Yeah. Try it. You try it now while we're on. Where is she? Hello, Alexa. You <laughs> <laughs> can't, the picture fell. You can't say hey in front of it. You got to just say. <laughs> I like John got really personal with Alexa. It's like, hey, Alexa. <laughs> Well, you know, guys, you heard it here first. Everyone, I want everyone to do a homework assignment and go find your Alexa and uh, <laughs> certainly ask her some questions. But, you know, what Otto is saying is something that I think, you know, we always try to talk about at Project Independence, you know, because the idea of having something like that, that you can ask and, and ask, to, it's, it's a quick thing, you know, to, to play a song, you know, to ask a fact, you know, all the time, my husband will ask Alexa like random questions, um, you know, that we're just like discussing, you know, so that she'll give a little you know, internet description. But for someone that is alone, and homebound, and that's just the basic features. You know, there, there's a lot of technology that's a similar thing that you can do a lot more, you know, with. Well, I'm learning a lot, actually, and you can put things like a calendar on there. You mm -hmm. can say, I'm not gonna use her name because I don't want her to talk to me while I'm on, <laughs> but blah, blah, uh, <laughs> put me down for uh, April 1st, doctor's appointment with Dr. Jojo at 10 a.m. Yeah. And it goes into the calendar. That's and amazing. then you can say, uh, uh, you know, blah, blah. What do I have on my schedule tomorrow? And it will read off your calendar. And, uh, you know, for people who have vision problems, um, it becomes a whole new way of life. Yeah. And you can use it also to say, uh, blah, blah, call, bill, mm -hmm. mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And it will call, you know. I, it, my mother-in-law doesn't have like a computer in the house. So, you know, she has a phone system. Does Alexis work with that or you have to have the computer? 
Yeah, she you don't has, need a computer. She has cable television. Yeah. Probably, right? So with that, you can get internet access. I can't you tell you. You need like Wi-Fi. Like if yeah. she has like a Wi-Fi situation um, in the house, which, you know, she, you know, could it probably does. Um, it, it which makes, is very doable. But I mean, it's silly. I mean, she could hook it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, for somebody like your mother-in-law, uh, to me, it has a tremendous amount of value. We've talked about it. Um, and I, I'm learning more every day about what you can and can't do. Like we now use it to communicate from one room to another. You know, you say blah, yeah, blah, and there's drop in at auto and it, it'll connect me with the other room. Yeah, because my um, one of my best friends, she has, I forgot, you know, I wish I have to next week, I'll bring the name, but it's, it's in the, you know, Alexa family because there's, you know, different models. And I think it's well, more of like a video. Siri or Siri. Yeah, it's a video thing. And so she does it for her son, you know, so when her son gets home from school or, you know, she's and she's at work, she'll like, and she just, and it's great because he doesn't have to do anything, you know, so she'll just pop in and say, you know, Caleb, where are you? You know, and then he'll come and, and she'll see him. So it's, um, we were actually talking to our other friend whose parents, you know, live in Florida and, and she's here. And she was saying, it's just so hard and they're not good with technology. So we were trying to think of ways. So she was actually, thinking of getting that for her family because this way her, she doesn't have to worry about her mom figuring oh, what do I hit? What do I do? You know, Sandra would just be able to kind of buzz in and say, Hey mom, you know, just checking in, you know, do you take your medicine? Whatever it is, you know? So it's, um, there's a well, huge world. You, of, like you of, can uh, put routines in where you say, you, you know, blah, blah, uh, three o'clock every day. Mm -hmm. Tell me to take right. my blood pressure medicine. And, and it'll go off and it'll tell them three o'clock every day. Uh, and it can be in multiple rooms. It doesn't have to be in one room. That thing costs like $35 or something. Well, and like that's that. what I think is such yeah. a great thing to mention. It's not that expensive. It. It's, and that, and there's so many different ones. You know, the one I have is more like cylindrical shaped. Well, I have one like that downstairs. That's an right. But that's one. what's great is like, it's not like it's this giant bulky thing that's going to take up, you know, some space, you know, I have, you know, I've seen ones that are like a little tiny circle, you know. Well, so this thing here is, yeah. I mean, you know, that's pretty small. Yeah. You right. Know? So it's wonderful. It's great. Yeah. And, and we should be, Dan told us, hot off the press, that Alexa is able, if you say play WCWP, she plays it. So she's already uh, got an A plus in my book, you know, for, <laughs> for buzzing in with WCWP. So but, um, Those are so many examples of what people can do without, yes, you do need to have somebody who's going to help you set mm -hmm. it up. Yeah. All right. There's an app on the phone and you, and you can do, it's not hard to do. Mm -hmm. I could do it now. Uh, but you know, you need, you, you need to have that. So like John's mother-in-law may not have a smartphone and the app, but somebody in your family could have it and set it up for her. Right. Yeah. No, I didn't want to make kids because, you know, what we were going to get her is, but it's only the size of the computer is um, one of these things where you can take a picture and you send the picture and right. it keeps going up. It's very yeah. nice. I have it. My kids got it for us and they take a picture on their phone and they, there's an app. They send it right to me. And all of a sudden I see Lucas doing something with Tristan doing yeah. something. And, but it's too small for her eyes. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to come up with something. Um, but I'm going to change the subject just for a minute. Um, she called Steph the other day, crying. They're coming after me. What are you talking about, Ma? They've called me twice already. They said I owe money, and I don't owe money, but they're going to be at the door. Wow. And she got on. Steph says, Mommy, we told you this. Don't answer the phone. Don't, don't. Listen, and she's trying to get the message machine to talk to Steph on the computer on the cell phone and she's saying relax i actually she called me i called her i said i do all these programs forget about it please i tell you all the time just call me whenever you want you get a question like that call me she thought she had taken her social security i mean you get confused when you get old of course. it really is such a shame i mean she was frantic and i said how many times is this going to happen don't answer your phone and what heartbreaks about it is she says yeah but it's somebody to talk to. I, oh, my there God. you go. No, and anyway. you, know, you know, you can you can actually the messages that go on to her phone, depending on what she has, can actually go on to Steph's email. 
Really? I do it with Optimum, and you know I what? get well, I get gonna, the, gonna the house back. messages oh, on my phone. That's a, I had no idea we're going to come back to that. Right now, we got to take a break and try to catch up. You're listening to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web. Check out the lineup. Subscribe to podcasts and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. Welcome back to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan, and my co-host today is Otto Lose. Zipping along. Zipping along. We're at the end. It's amazing. We're at the end of the Christina Lou show. Um, you know, the, 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 the week, it goes so long getting to the show, excuse me, and then it just happens so quick. It really does. Uh, what we do have to do, Christina, is bring everybody up to date if there's a few things going on in town um, that they should be knowing about um, of, of importance as we are, you know, people are looking for things to do. Yes, absolutely. So I just want to remind people that next week we have on the fabulous Rebecca Miller, who is going to join us and talk about her journey into mindfulness. You know, we, we do a lot of talking about uh, mental health and, and whatnot and things to do. So she's going to kind of share how she got involved. Um, you know, she not only works for the town, but she's, you know, very involved in her side yoga um, instructor stuff. So she is going to be talking about that, which I think is fitting because that's something that we spend a lot of time talking about and we love having Rebecca on. And I think, listen, we're in spring now. It's all about renewal and kind of, um, you know, fine. I, I was laughing last week. I was saying, I've been d- I dabbling in the essential oil world. My friend got me involved and, um, you know, we've been, we got all of our kits, my husband and I, cause you know, Jay's very, like, he's very particular of what scents are going on in the, you know, it's always like, Oh God, what is that smells bad? So I was like, all right, baby steps in it. And of course he loves it. So we ordered one for the bedroom, a little diffuser. And it's great because there are just a lot of benefits and listen, some of it might be, you know, believing the benefits, and listen, I'm at a point where I'm willing to just roll with whatever. And I, so, so far I've been doing it for like two weeks now and I have a little stress blend in there. Um, and, you know, then there's, I love Thieves is one of my favorites because that which blend one, is, one? Supposed, what'd you say? What'd you, what did you say you loved? It's called Thieves. And it's actually the story behind it is great because the mix of what's in there, there's clove and cinnamon and there's a whole, a lemon, there's like a whole bunch of stuff, but it was from the um, the robbers actually during the Spanish uh, flu didn't catch it because they put that that's what the stuff they had on it. So they were able to rob graves and all different things while wearing that. So that's kind of where this came from. So it really has. And I was I was in a class with my friend. She, she had sent me and I was watching it online and it was just showing the different benefits, you know. So I said, listen, it can't hurt if it's going to help your immune system. They were really pushing it. Um, in recent times. So we have that, you know, if anyone knows my husband, we, he's like, keep that one going 24 seven in the house. So we have the air purifier and the essential oil, the window open. There's like a lot going on in, in the Lou house. Um, you know, if, if anybody walks in the door, um, but it's really, it's a wonderful smell and it's relaxing and it's very pretty. So I made a little, you know, kind of Zen corner with, uh, you know, my little pretty crystals and that. So that's like my, my little uh, safe space. So I haven't heard that in a long time, robbing graves, grave yeah. robbers. I know. I, that's a great story. I, really yes, know it was. I thought it was such an interesting little nod to, you know, because I was like, because when I said, I was like, thieves, I was like, what the heck is this, you know? And, you know, I love there's these little rollers, you know, that you could, I, I bought two that came with my kit, you know, so this way I haven't even worn like, you know, a, a spray, you know, in so long, because I love the smell of the little natural sense of these um, essential oil stuff. So it's, um, yeah, so that's uh, what I've been kind of dabbling in. Um, so it's really nice that Rebecca will be coming on and talking about all of her stuff next week. So I just want to remind people to tune in for that. I'm glad you did because Rebecca's wonderful. She really is. And it's so exciting to have her to be interviewing her. That's it's right. Be- and it's April 2nd, which all of our dedicated listeners should know that is the day before Moi's birthday. 
<laughs> so it is even, and I love, which is, which I have to also say is that when my birthday falls around Easter, just reminds me of when I was a little girl, because I loved that, um, you know, Easter and my birthday always was such a thing. So I think that's why to this day, I love all things. You know, I love the Easter colors, the flowers, spring. I love the whole message. Um, so I was laughing with my mom because when I was a little girl, what sticks in my brain so vividly, which clearly shows who I am today, um, is because, you know, it was always my birthday was a big thing. And I remember in school when my birthday would fall around Easter. Dude, I just have to interrupt one second. Yeah. You celebrate your birthday? <laughs> yeah. You might not have known. <laughs> do you do you call her Easter eggs? Oh, please. Do, are we are you preaching to the choir here? Um, but my mom would make me cupcakes that looked like little Easter baskets. So there'd be like a little Twizzler, you know, for the top. And she'd put a little oh. jelly beans in and I would bring it into the class. And I remember being so excited because, you know, I think, you know, and that's when I knew the bar was starting to get set. You know, here I am, you know, 35 years old and I'm still like, you know, all right, I, I've set a bar that I've I need to maintain since I was, you know, four years old. Um, so, <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's nice. So it's very nice that this year it all kind of falls around the same time again. And it's all about, you know, rebirth and renewal. So what, you know, it's, it's kind of my mantra in, in recent times. So that I just had to give a quick plug to, to next week. But back to North Hempstead, um, a lot of people have been reaching out this week that they received the Pioneer newsletter. I hope both of you have received your copy. Um, if, if you have not, then, you know, I um, will, I reach out to the mailing house. So if anyone is six year over in the town of North Hempstead and has not received it or, you know, wants a, you know, or has an address change, whatever it is, if you just call 311 or 869 6311. I'm able to um, to make sure we follow up on that because it's really a lot of good information um, and I'm certainly proud of this issue. So it should look like this in your mail. You know, make sure you don't throw it in the garbage. It's got a lot of great, um, great stuff about what's going on in the town. There's a whole page we talked last week about it, about the radio show, which is my favorite part. And it's just great tips. You know, it's filled with a lot of golden nuggets. And John, I hope you yeah, have Otto, Otto got a feature. There you go. Did you see that one, John? There, there it is. There's the money shot. It came There's missing. my favorite. But it's um it's really actually my family put that on. We have the Snapchat that we use, and they one of them took a picture of that page and they put it out there and made a big hoop to do out of it. Yeah, <laughs> because great it's picture nice. of you. It is, right? I when he sent that to me, I was like, oh, this one's going in Christina's files. This is too good, this one. Um, you know, but <laughs> well, just to take one second mm -hmm. aside on Facebook, there was a picture of Otto. Go, you were in the Navy, Otto, right? Yes, I was. It was a picture from when you were in the Navy. Yeah. I sent that picture around to all in my family. Show her really? who Otto was. That yeah. is what, such a phenomenal picture. I love that picture. Yeah, I was like oh. 19, 20 years old. Well, yeah, listen, and okay. here's one for you. March 21st, which was just this past, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think I, I told you this story already. Yeah. Uh, on Sunday was 65 years ago, I entered the Navy on really? that day. Yeah, wow. 65, yeah. And I, and I wasn't, I was drafted. <laughs> Voluntarily, I, I pushed my draft up. But anyhow, oh, okay. we, we did that last week. <laughs> Yes, but it was your anniversary. That's important to mention. And, well, and it's a long Otto, time Otto, ago. It's hard for me to believe it was 65 yeah, years ago. I know. I hear you. You know, and listen, Otto, I think Otto is just infamous amongst all of our friends and family. I mean, all of my friends at this point know who Otto is. I um, wound up on an aircraft carrier, just like the Intrepid, the one that's in New York. Really? Yeah. If, if you ever go on there. Uh, the one that I always make a point of showing grandchildren is the area where you sleep and the bunks were four high uh, in a space like where my office is. Probably we had 20 people um, sleeping in that area. And the, and the space between the bunks was like this. You know, it was like. Peter, just back came on it. Out of, Peter wants to jump in. Yeah. I didn't know you were on a carrier. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> it's, it's one. USS Randolph, CVA 15. What year? Uh, 56, 57. Also, it had it had the, the two uh, the two flight decks. Yes. Like the it was Essex class. OK. Yeah. I'm not not nuclear powered, though. No, no. 
This right. was a this this carrier was in World War II and had a lot of damage from kamikaze pilots. Actually, not while I was there, thank God. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it goes back to. Uh, but it was one of the first angled deck jobs. Yeah, right. how, how, the, big, how big was the crew? I think we had like 3,200 people on the ship, something like that. 60 that or 70 big. planes. What kind of, what, you know what planes they had on? They were called Furies. The one I was involved with VF-62, which was a fighter squadron, but I will not make that sound as uh, jazzy as it was. I was payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was also when it was general quarters, I was a decontamination man, which meant I would put on a, a big suit and uh, I was protected from radioactivity, theoretically, with a Geiger counter. So when we did that, I often thought about that. I said, you know, you could be the last guy on this ship because you got this big suit on and and I'll be, uh, you know, surviving the radioactivity. Uh you know, it was, uh, it was, I was almost on for a year. Um, it's different living, but we had everything. Barbershops, movies, you know, you name it. It's we lost, so even so though it was pity. peacetime, we lost 11 people on that cruise uh, because of the danger of flying and people getting blown off of the flight deck, um, you know, uh, and nothing was uh, there was one article my mother sent me it was uh, it was about this big and it said four pilots killed in the USS Randolph and that was it there was no names nothing and uh, she sent it to me and that's the only way I found out that four people were killed and then wow. I started to ask people and uh, you know it, it, people who flew on aircraft carriers are uh, I give them a lot of credit I'll tell you that you're yeah. interested in aircraft carriers for some reason. Well, no, you know what? I, I was always into it. My dad built planes during World War II out in Republic. He was 4F with the Army. He was oh, 4F okay. Cubs. So he went to work at Republic, and um, he actually worked his way up to becoming an inspector there. And then they lost defense contracts in the 60s, and Republic basically shut down. But um, uh, it, 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 was, it was always interesting. You know, I mean, um, you know, the, I, th I think aircraft carriers are some of the most interesting things ever built it's like a small city you know all right i gotta go i'm getting called off <laughs> there you go so you learn oh, well, we're awesome. getting called off you aren't getting called off Peter. we're at the end of the show that's what happens um that's what happens when family gets together nevertheless another wonderful wonderful show i want to thank everybody um and i wish everybody a wonderful weekend you've been listening to senior talk radio here on 88.1 fm and WCWP.org. Have a wonderful, safe weekend. We're back next Happy week. birthday to my goddaughter. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs>